The power of dividends in front of your very eyes. I'm going to do this video. I did it before on this exact same topic a few months back, but I'm going to do it again because I think it just goes so along with the reason I'm not a big fan of fixed index annuities because dividends play such a huge role in investment success and fixed index annuities don't use dividends. And because of that, there's no way, there's no way a fixed index annuity can beat the stocks uh, for any given uh, longer term of time. Just can't when you're not using dividends. So I'm going to show you why here uh, using the American Funds Investment Company of America. It's just, I cannot stress this enough. If you're investing in stocks and you're investing in dividend stocks, you need to have them reinvested. Unless you're spending the money because you need to put food on the table. I get that. But man, if you're not reinvesting your dividends you're, and you're not or even worse, if you're not receiving dividends because you're in a certain uh, portfolio that doesn't give you dividends off the portfolio that you have. I just I, I would ask you to think again without question because the dividends I'll, I'll show you are just critically important. All right. So don't forget to subscribe down below. Got my subscribe T-shirt on and I got that little thing right there to brainwash you to subscribe. All right. And then, of course, thumbs up and questions and uh, thumbs up comments, questions even by all means. All right. So let's dive into this. One of my favorite investment pieces ever. And I'm going to share it with you again. Again, this is twice now I've done this and I don't, I'll do it every single day if I'm asked to. I love this. I think it's so the most fundamentally important thing on investments. You got to understand uh, Investment Company of America, the ICA guy. They use this every year since the dawn of mankind. Since I've been in this business, that's for sure. It's just wonderful. And uh, it's the same story over and over and over again. Uh, this is for 2018. I don't know if that's the end. It's probably not the end of 2018. It's probably the end of 2017. Uh, they talk about the founder. Um, they talk about, uh, let's make this even, see, I don't want to make it too big because, well, I'll tell you, we'll make it big right there. Uh, they talk about why you got to stay ahead of inflation because a postage stamp has gone up 1,567% uh, since 1934. Loaf of bread has gone up 1,780%. A single family home, 4,000%. Automobile, 2,500% roughly, and uh, you have to have uh, something that can beat the rate of inflation. And stocks do that. Bonds don't. That's all there is to it. Uh, and stocks have outpaced other investments uh, using average annual total return. Stocks have averaged 10.1, bonds 7.9, cash 4.8, inflation 4%. Uh, these are calculated with dividends reinvested from 1967 through 2017. Uh, you're not getting bonds at 7.9 going forward. It's not. Uh, I doubt you get stocks at 10.1, but you're certainly not getting bonds or cash uh, at those rates. It's just not happening. But anyway, at the end of the day, they're saying, look, inflation is 4%. Cash is 4.8. So after inflation, you're not making much money in cash. And after taxes, inflation, you're not making any money. And and that's uh, that will forever be the case. All right. So uh, inform investing versus uh, saving. And uh, this is the power of dividends right here on top of gross stocks and they give us the boons and I've been using these, the same couple, they haven't changed the picture for years. It's, it's so important to understand. This is how fixed income at, uh, account works too, by the way. Uh, you put $200,000 and it was a 20 year government bond, a treasury bond that back then was paying 6.02 a year. Uh, you take out 240,000 after 20 years, the bond matures at $200,000. So you put your money in, you get 240 out and they get the $200,000 out 20 years later. Now, remember, uh, let's see, at, at uh, $200,000 future value, at, what do you say? we'll say 3% inflation, uh, $200,000 future value, 20 years. Yep. And then, oops, ah, zero payment. Uh, that means I'll have the same purchasing power as $110,000 today. So you got... Uh, $200,000 20 years ago, you got $240,000 out of it. You get your principal back, but in terms of purchasing power, uh, that's going to purchase you uh, $110,000 in today's numbers. All right. So you've lost, even though it says 200,000, it doesn't buy you the same goods as 200,000 did 20 years previously. And that's just a fact. So now we go, uh, in, in fact, even worse <laughs> is now when in 2018, the 20 year treasury is only paying 2.58. So you're getting 6.02 when you took this sucker out in 1997. But in, in 2018, it's only paying 2.58 when it matures. So not only are you not getting $240,000 a year uh, over the next 20 years, you're getting 
a little bit more than a third of that. That's it. I mean, so you, I mean, that's, you know, 5,000 bucks roughly a year over 20 years. You're getting, I mean, a hundred thousand dollars of cash over the next 20 years, given the rates the way they were or where they are today. It's horrific. So you go down here and this is what happens with these guys. They invested $200,000, the Clausens, they were able to take out $228,000 of income. So roughly the same as what the, uh, the Boons did, but their ending value is now $328,000, all right? And if they're getting, we'll just say 3% on 328,000 because of dividends, well, you can say two and a half times 2.5%, they're getting $8,200 off dividends alone. I mean, that's just off just off the dividends, but I haven't taken any principal out. And here they're going to get of just $5,000 off their interest. That's it. So they have more money, which will pay them more dividends, and they have less money with less interest. So just that's the power of dividends right there. Dividends reinvestment. Now, let's keep going down. Uh, I don't want to go too much of this. I want to show the dividend thing because I think it's a critically important understand. And you can I'll put the link to this in the show notes and you can watch all this. Again, what happens to the markets doesn't go up. And here we're going to talk about here. Uh, this is, gives you dividends. Grow, so everyone says, well, the stock market from 1966 to 1982 didn't go up. Well, that's not true. Uh, growth of a hypothetical $10,000 investment in period when the stock market was flat. The market itself from a price to price perspective was flat. But with dividends reinvested, this fund averaged 5.7 a year. So the S&P 500 didn't do anything. With S&P 500 from 1966 to 1978, it's really to 1982, but either way, it doesn't matter. In this case, they're using that you know 11-year time frame or 12-year time frame. Uh, they're saying the S&P 500 was completely flat. It made nothing if you did not include the dividends. If you include the dividends in the specific fund, you average 5.7 a year. So while the S&P 500 from a point-to-point -point price perspective was flat, it wasn't flat with dividends reinvested. It just wasn't. The dividends reinvested on the S&P 500 averaged 3.9. For this fund specifically, which is more value oriented to begin with, it averaged 5.7. That is the power of dividends right there. Price to price. If you would have done a fixed income annuity or any uh, uh, investment that does not uh, allow you to reinvest dividends, that excludes dividends from 1966 to 1982, you literally made no money. Nothing. Not the case with dividends reinvestment. Reinvested though. All right. So we're going to go to the let me make this a little bit smaller because I'm going to show you this chart because this will be the kicker. All right. This right here, I used to keep up on my wall. The growth of a hip, hypothetical $10,000 in the Investment Company of America. We're going to look at the growth of a hypothetical 10000 from 1934 from its inception until the end of 2017. All right. We're going to do it with dividends not reinvested and compare the S&P 500. And what you'll see is... Um, it had a couple of down years, negative 38, negative 2, negative 7, negative 2, negative 11.9, negative 13, negative 10.7. You can see that. We had some volatility in there for sure. Uh, this is in 1973 and 74. All right. Those are bad years. 1969 was a bad year. A bunch of good years under the Reagan years. Then 2001, down 4.6, down 14.5, down 34.7 in 2008. All right. So we got hammered a lot. No other way around that. Uh, and then you can look at this, I think, relative to the S&P 500, if I'm not mistaken. I think there is a place you can look at it relative to the S&P 500. Um, I, I may not as chart. There is a place on here someplace. I just can't remember where it is. All right. So now I want to show you something. All right. So if you look at the bottom and let's make this bigger and I'll make it bigger, even better here in just a second. All right. Value ended without dividends. This is dividends excluded. So again, point to point, like these fixed income annuities, fixed index annuities do for a lot of these structured portfolios that these uh, brokerage firms will sell you, you'll exclude dividends. So point to point value at the end of the year. So we started with how much we start with 10,000 bucks. Yeah, we start with $10,000. All right. So 1950 is worth $45,000. All right. And we go to 1960. This is value with dividends not reinvested. It is worth $145,000. 1970, we'll just go to 1980, it is worth $307,000. Pretty good, but I mean, that's over you know, a long time. The 2000, without dividends reinvested, all right, it is worth uh, $5.8 million. Not too shabby, $5.8 without dividends reinvested. 
And then at the end of 2017, it was worth $12.95 million without dividends reinvested. All right. Now watch the power of dividends reinvested. So in 1950, this $10,000 grew to $45,000, even having gone through the Great Depression. With dividends reinvested, though, it grew to $76.6,000. We'll go to 1970. This guy, without the dividends, grew to $307,000. And our portfolio, with the dividends, grew to $908,000. We'll go to uh, 19, what was that, seven? We'll go to year two, uh, 1990. Without dividends, is that $1.58 million. With dividends is $10.4 million. And then we'll go to the end of 2017. Without dividends is $12.95 million. With dividends reinvested is $147 million. The power of dividends compounded over time. And we'll see this right here. So basically what we're seeing here is they show you the value of the dividends reinvested. So an investment company of America with dividends reinvestment is $1.47 million on a $10,000 investment from 1934. Stock market, which is the S&P 500 with dividends reinvested was $60 billion. Uh, so the ICA gave us 12.1. The stock market S&P 500 gave us 10.9. So it's only 1.2% difference. Not a big deal, right? Well, if that's compounded over time, that's huge, huge. Without the dividends, we got 8.9%. Capital return without dividends gives 8.9 average annual return. But it only, re, uh, oops, only gave us at the end of that time frame 12.95 million. So even though we only were down roughly 3.2% a year, the dividends gave us 3.2% a year. If it wasn't reinvested, that compounds 3.2% a year plus 3.2% a year or times 3.2 times, times, times each and every year compounded year over year over year. And this light blue is how much more it grew with the dividends than the dark blue, but it's, that's not that's not drawn to scale. Here it'd be drawn to scale. This chart is based on a logarithmic scale. So it uses smaller and smaller increments for larger numbers. If the scale, this is this chart right here. If the scale are arithmetic, with say one inch representing every $10,000, the dark blue area, including results of dividends have been excluded, excluded, would be 108 feet tall. So again, if we use arithmetic, this dark blue area, which is not having dividends reinvested, would have given us all of 108 feet tall uh, if it's just one inch represent every $10,000. Uh, the lighter blue area, though, oh, that's about a 10 story uh, building. The lighter blue section, though, withdrawn to scale arithmetic with one inch representing $10,000 would be higher than the Statue of Liberty. In fact, it'd be more than eight times the height of the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> this illustrates. So basically, here's the Statue of Liberty, 151 feet. And here's a dividends reinvested if it was drawn to arithmetic scale, one inch representing every $10,000. <laughs> You'd have... 100 and 1,232 feet, eight times as high as the Statue of Liberty. With the dividends not reinvested, it wouldn't even be as high as the Statue of Liberty. And that, my friends, is the power of reinvesting dividends. Time and reinvesting is just, you got to, you just got to do it. If you're going to buy stocks, you need to reinvest the dividends. I cannot stress that enough. It, I, I just cannot, there's, there's the proof right there. On any given year, it won't matter. But for a 20, 30 year time frame, I mean, we're talking, let's just look back from 1934, all right, where we both started 10,000 bucks. We'll talk to 1950. We had 76,000 in our account with dividends reinvested, and you had 45,000 in your account without dividends reinvested. We had 30,000 more than what you had just because we reinvested the dividends. If we go to 1960, which would be the course of a 30 year time frame, not even, we'd have, uh, 100, you would have 145,000 and we have twice yours, uh, more than twice. We have 336,000. So over the course of your lifetime in retirement, we would have doubled more than doubled you just from nothing more than reinvesting dividends. Don't discount dividends. Be very, very careful when you're looking at it, a contract of any fixed income annuity, variable annuity, structured product that says we are not including dividends. It's going to be tough. In fact, I would say impossible for your portfolio to keep up. It just will be. Now, again, if you're buying it with the context that you want bond-like returns, that's different. But if they're excluding dividends, you're not getting stock-like returns. It's impossible. Anyway, I hope this helps. As always, you like what you see. Don't forget to subscribe down below. Thumbs up. Comments always help. And uh, we'll see you next time on Heritage Wealth Planning. Thanks, guys.